What's up, everybody? It's time for Toledo Bend Recap. First stop, 2024 Bassmaster Elite Series season. Um, I'm a South Louisiana guy, so as soon as I saw Toledo Bend come up on that schedule, uh, <laughs> it made me feel a little warm and fuzzy inside for sure. Um, look, I, did, I, I don't have as much experience on Toledo Bend as a lot of people thought I did, but I've had some history there. Fished several tournaments there, had some good ones, had some bad ones. So I, I kind of knew the lake, but I really didn't. That place has changed so much over the last 10 to 15 years. You know, back in the day, I mean, that place used to be absolutely loaded with hydrilla, and then it, it all died off, you know, 16, 17, and it just started to get some grass back a couple of years ago. But, you know, I went up there a few times during pre-practice just to kind of see where the grass was, but it really wasn't where... I wanted it to be or expected it to be. I think the grass would have played more if it was more main lake. So, you know, going into that practice or the, the official practice, the three, the, the three days before the tournament, um, I didn't expect a whole lot. We were coming off some cold conditions. Um, it had actually been very, very warm there for a couple of weeks. And I know I saw some reports of some guys catching some big ones starting to stage up, but cold weather. And then we had a warming trend through the tournament. So, this is my bread and butter. I mean, pre-spawn, anticipating where those females are going to set up is kind of what's made me who I am. That that's that 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 is where my strength is. So I went into this event, Toledo Band and Lake Fork. Um, that recap's coming soon too. Um, saying I'm going to do me. I, I'm going to do me. I'm going to get shallow. I'm going to try to anticipate where some of these big females are going to set up. I'm not going to stare at a screen. I'm just going to do me. You know, in the history of, you know, with the recent history of forward-facing sonar, local knowledge kind of doesn't mean much anymore. But I wanted to do me. So practice wasn't very good. I did not catch a lot of big females. I didn't catch hardly any. I think I had one great big one one day on a, uh, on a Spro Ruku Shad 65. It was like an eight-pounder. Didn't get my hands on her. But other than that, ran around the whole lake. I, I settled into an area that I'm very, very comfortable with on Toledo. And I only found two areas that the males were up, the shad were up, and I felt, and I knew historically those two areas that happens first in Toledo Bend. We're at the end of February. We're historically one to two weeks early for the fish really to start moving up. But I knew one of two areas it was going to happen first. So, you know, you, you kind of have to scout that place for the wind. So that's what I did. Day one, I had two areas, uh, one on one side of the lake, one on the other. I was up north of the bridge and uh, where there were males up. So we had a really hard uh, southwest wind that first day of the tournament. So that made my decision to go to a different area other than the, uh, there was one area that I really wanted to live in the whole time because I knew it went down there first. Um, it had the ecosystem and I knew where those fish would set up when it happened. It did not happen during the during practice, but it was more of an anticipation thing. But because of the really hard southwest wind, I, I, I elected not to go up there. It would have been gnarly getting there and back, and the winds would have been blowing right in there. So, so I elected to go to a different area. Now, we had some really strong winds starting that night before, and what happened to the first area, I only had 12 and a half pounds, 12 pounds, four ounces, I think, on day number one, had me in 85th place. Um, guys, I was defeated after that first day. 85th place with 12 pounds, um, my head was down. So long story short, sent it to primary area. We had more favorable winds on day two, and it happened. Um, finally caught a big one. I think I caught a seven-something. Um, and then I had two little sweet spots in practice. They had one spot that I made two casts on and caught a couple, like three-and-a-half pounders. And uh, they were females. Um, and then a couple of males and some other little small areas. But I was fishing some very, very heavy hydrilla. And, guys, this place was extremely pressured. Not by tournament boats. There was a couple of tournament boats I saw coming around there. But a lot of local pressure. And boats were just all over the place. So you had to do something different. And that's what I started doing. Caught all my fish on a half ounce jackhammer, missile baits, spunk shad, uh, four and a half on the back of it, white. Um, I will show you guys my setup and what I did, you know, after this. But it is really hard to beat a chatterbait this time of the year when those fish start staging up, and especially in heavy vegetation like that. 
Um, so if you notice on some of these fish catches, I was doing something very, very different. Um, I started stroking the chatterbait, throw it out there, let it hit the bottom, and I would bring it up and just snatch it up and let it fall. I'd bring it up, snatch it up, and let it fall. That's what the bigger ones wanted. They were seeing chatterbaits and swim baits and spinner baits just all day long with the pressure, and you had to do something different. So that's what I did. Day two, went in there, um, put my head down, and I immediately started catching a couple of good ones. And, uh, and then I landed on, a, finally, the first female that I put my hands on the entire week. Um, caught one, I caught a seven-something in there and filled a limit. After day two, a uh, little, little better than 20 pounds. 20 pounds, 13 ounces, I think I had on day two, um, which was barely enough to get me in the cut. I was 49th. So I moved from 85th all the way to 49th, got me in the championship or semifinal Saturday. That's where you want to be. And my hopes were through the roof on day three because I knew day three was going to be the best day. I needed to get there, just needed to get to Saturday. And we did it. Um, went way over there, man, and it started pretty fast. You know, I immediately caught a five-pounder right off the back um, and then caught another one. And, uh, damn, man, it, it the wind slacked off. Um, the high pressure set in from that front that we had come through, and it got extremely tough on day three. Um, I knew I could have probably went to the bank in there and probably caught some smaller keepers. I knew I could have, but I need. I knew I needed a giant bag. So I stuck to my guns. I stayed out there, ended up catching a third keeper in there. And then like one o'clock noon, 1230 or so, I went back to the other area that I was in day one because I'm like, it's going to happen. That, that place, it could happen too. Went, went all the way over there those winds had pushed a lot of the muddy and colder water into that area. The water temperature, even though we were in a warming trend, the water temperature actually dropped in that area. And, uh, and even the males disappeared. I mean, that area just got trashed. I ran all the way to it. It's like 1.30, almost two o'clock. And I'm like, what do I do? I'm starting to think of places around the landing I can go to maybe catch a couple of keepers. And I made a, a great decision. Turn around, I said, look, we're going to go. I needed a little mental reset. I'm going to go back into that area. And that is the only place that I know the females. There are some, a few females that have moved up. Um, so I went all the way back. And that's and, and that, that, that actually ended up being a, a fantastic decision. Ran all the way back over there. Um, ended up catching that one almost, almost eight pounds, um, on, on literally like the last 20 minutes of the day, but I did exactly what I set out to do from the start. That is how I wanted to fish. I was only weighed four fish for 20 pounds and some change moved up and ended up finishing 29th in the tournament. Uh, so big comeback. I wish I could have got in an area on day one. I might not have called them, but that's the area I wanted to live in, but you have to fish to lead them in based on the winds. So... So that's it, guys. Toledo Ben, I'm going to give you guys a full rundown of my tackle, my setup, what I was doing. Again, I had to do something different. It was so heavily pressured, but it ended up working out okay. 29th, first tournament of the season. Um, I'll take it, um, especially because I fish the way that I just love to fish. So, um, But that's it. Uh, Lake Fork recap is coming up very soon, but uh, thank you guys for watching, and dream big.